Hello. Today what we're going to do is we're going to use the Managal program to go ahead and model a 20 meter dipole antenna and then see how its uh, far field plots look. And uh, after that we're going to go ahead and uh, add another dipole antenna and make a phased array and see how the far field plots look there and compare both. So we start out by going ahead into Managal and just uh, it defaults to a brand new project, so we title it here uh, in the name 20 meter dipole antenna. The default frequency uh, is 14.150, which is a 20 meter band, and we'll leave it there. So at this point, what we'll go ahead and do is switch to the lambda mode, which means that instead of meters, now the program will be accepting fractions of a wavelength or a full wavelength. So what we want to do then is to go ahead and put at an, the uh, antenna here at minus 0.25. So that will be a quarter of a wavelength to the negative y side and a quarter of a wavelength, 0.25, uh, to the positive y side. So once we have that, we go ahead and see what our view looks like. And there it is, our antenna. Right click while hovering over the middle part of the antenna, and we select Move Add Source to, and we select Center of Wire. So we've just added a source here. That little circle there is what the source is. And if we go back to the Geometry tab, we see that the Wire 1, which is right here, the first element, at the center, we're putting a 1 volt uh, alternating voltage to drive our antenna. So without doing much else, we go over to the Calculate tab. We make sure that our material, which defaults to no loss, is changed over to copper wire. And we leave the default at, uh, at height at uh, 10 meters. In other words, it's a dipole about 30 feet up in the air. Right now we hit Start. And the program has run in 0 0.09 seconds. And what we're getting is an antenna with an SWR of 1.86, which is not bad. A gain in dB isotropic of 6.86. We'll look into that a little bit here. And a resistance of 82, which is not bad for a first approach. When we click on the far field plots, we see this asymmetric uh, pattern that comes out. If we hover over here by holding the mouse click down, we see that the maximum occurs as we would expect it on the plus x and the minus x directions. It's a symmetric antenna with the maximum of the gain in those areas. Following the DX commander's standard, we go ahead and select elevation and enter 5 degrees to see how this antenna would work for DX. And at this point, we're seeing that the antenna has minus 3.9 dBi uh, for 5 degrees of elevation, which is really not that, not that bad for the other thing to look for dx is that all the way from, my, from 15 degrees down to about 5 degrees, we're pretty good. I mean, even at 15 degrees, we're looking at 4.4 dBi. And at 5 degrees, like we said, we're looking at 3.9 negative. So that's not a bad antenna. Okay, so, so far so good. Now what we're going to do is add a second antenna by entering a second line here under the geometry tab frame zero, we default to the origin, and we're going to go ahead and say, let's go ahead and make another one of these dipoles, quarter wavelength on one side, minus 0.25 in other words, and on the positive y side, we'll again put a 0 0.25, quarter wavelength. But this time, we're going to go ahead and offset it by, say, 0.75, okay? So that's three quarters of a wavelength of offset between the first dipole and the second dipole. And of course, in X2, we have to put 0.75 also so that we can go ahead and offset both elements of the antenna. And if we look in view, we see right there, that's our original element with the source that we added earlier. And that's our second element right there. Since this is going to be a phased array, let's go ahead and right click, move add source, at the center of the wire and add our source there. So if we click back in the geometry tab under sources, now we see that 
wire element one, this one up here, the first dipole, has a one volt AC test voltage. And wire element two, the second element here, which is displaced three quarters of a wavelength away from the first dipole, also has a one volt AC driven uh, AC voltage. So what we're going to do here is add a phase, say 90 degree phase. Okay, so this is a phased array and one dipole is driven at zero phase and the other dipole is driven at 90 degree phase. Uh, of course, our view is going to look exactly the same. This dipole right here, we highlight it, is wire number one driven at zero phase. And this dipole right here is wire two driven at a 90 degree phase. Now, when we click on calculate here, we go ahead and just click start. And we come up with even better numbers, an SWR of 1.27, a higher gain, and the R has dropped from 82 ohms to 58 ohms. So, so far, so good. If we look at the fair field plots, that may even be more preferable. What used to be a symmetric pattern, a two lobe symmetric pattern, now becomes pretty much a single lobe with most of the gain. Again, holding down the mouse here, in the plus x direction, we see that that's the maximum of our gain, 9.5 dBi. And of course, these other lobes, that's a minimum at minus 9.3, 2.7. So the other areas have different amounts of gain, but the main gain is in the plus x direction. The cut across view right here uh, shows also that directivity in the plus x direction. Okay. As usual, we go to the x commander's standard, which is a far field elevation angle of five degrees. Click enter. And now for five degrees, we have not bad at all, 0, 0.0 dBi. Again, this is not the gain that normally gets quoted in these antennas. It's actually the gain that is for dx, the, you know, the five degree elevation, which is pretty good. It's right here. Now remember, dx could go from five degrees all the way up to eight degrees. And even at eight degrees, we're already seeing 3.7 dBi of, of uh, gain. And if we go even higher to 15 degrees, we're looking at 8 dBi of gain. So this would be a very good uh, DB, uh, uh, DX antenna, I would say. So again, the only thing that we've done is we've added a first dipole here, quarter wave on one side, quarter wave on the other, and then uh, added a second dipole, quarter wave on one side of, 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 the, uh, of the origin, and quarter wave on the other side along the y-axis, but offset from the first dipole by three quarters of a wavelength. That's where that 0.75 here comes from. And of course, that's where that 0.75 here comes from. So we uniformly push the second dipole on the x-axis. As you can see here, that places our dipole number one on the origin and uh, along the y-axis, and dipole number two about three quarters of a wavelength uh, away. If we hold down the shift key, we can move this pattern down a little bit, hold down the mouse and move it down, you start or moving it sideways, you start seeing what our pattern looks like right here. If we yeah, if we go ahead and zoom in, you get a little bit of a closer view of our antenna. So the calculation there is not bad. However, we can go one step further. Right now, if you notice in the geometry tab, we selected a phase of 90 degrees. Is that the best phase that we could actually use for this phased array? Well, let's try using the optimization button over here. By clicking on the optimization button, you get a, a window that allows you to select which parameters to optimize for. So what we could say right here <coughs> is say here, we're gonna go ahead and work on our source, specifically the phase of the source. So for this is position one or element one, Remember the phase for dipole number one was zero degrees, so that's not too exciting. Let's go to position number two, or phase uh, for the element number two. Remember, that's the one that we entered 90 degrees. So what we want to do is optimize the phase from its default value of 90 degrees to maybe optimize for SWR and optimize for match. So we want to optimize that, uh, that 90 degrees, that phase value. We click on start here. 
and the program start, starts optimizing and comes up with a value right here. So we see that we kicked up the resistance a little bit more, but we, op we told, it the pro told the program to optimize gain, which is what it's actually done, and to optimize the front to back, back ratio, which is actually done. So in its mind, it's actually done an optimization. We're free to take it or leave it. Our SWR continues at 1.27. The gain really didn't get us that much, but the front to back did improve a little bit. So we'll say, okay, let's take that one. So let's start it. And now it's actually run it. So we can actually now go into the far flow plots and see where the gain is now 9.6. And even when we go to the DX commander standard of five degrees, we now have zero point, yeah, actually a little bit worse to be fair, uh, in uh, five degrees. So we might actually decide to go the other way. Let's see what the actual phase that it came up with was. We click on the geometry tab and we see that it changed our phase from 90 to 98 degrees. So mathematically, that's what the program is telling us that the optimized uh, parameter is, subject to the constraints that we gave. We are free to take that value or revert back to our 90 degree value, which gave us a little bit better uh, five degree uh, DX performance. We click on the start and go back to 58.11 and 1.27 for SWR. So if we go over to the far field plot, we see right there, we took a little bit of a hit with the gain, but not much. And if we click on elevation, we go to Callum standard of five degrees, and we see that we have zero DBI at five degrees. Definitely an asymmetric antenna with very, very uh, good nulls around the certain points of the back, but definitely focused in the forward direction. And all we've done really is added a second dipole uh, to our original dipole, driven them with this phase degree difference of 90 degrees, which, which can be accomplished with some hardware that is commercially available. And uh, your coax essentially splits from your transmitter to one side and uh, that one will be given left at zero degree phase and your coax will split to the other dipole at a phase of 90 degrees. Again, this is a bit of hardware that can be obtained commercially. So that's pretty much what we wanted to, to show in this, uh, this exercise. There are advantages to having a phased array uh, for dipoles. We should actually call phase uh, 20 meter phased dipole array antenna, which is what we've ended up with. And now we save it and uh, we're done. That's the conclusion of this video.